All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to give you a direct proof that the closed interval a comma b is compact without using the heine borel theorem. And I found this proof actually in the beautiful book Real Mathematical Analysis by Puke, which uh, you should check out. It's really awesome. So um, suppose, and by the way, by compact here I mean covering compact. So suppose you, beautiful you, is a covering, is an open cover of, um, of the interval a comma b, and what we want to find, we want to find a finite subcover. All right, and for this, since we're the real num the real numbers, we might want to use the least upper bound property. So let's consider the following set. So the following set C, which is the set of real numbers, okay, set of x in, let's say, a comma b, such that uh, basically uh, the interval a comma x has a finite subcover, so is covered by finitely many elements. In you. In other words, uh, at point X is in that interval if uh, is in that set if the set A comma X has a finite subcurve, meaning that there are finitely many elements of U that cover uh, the interval A comma X, and of course. Uh, in order to finish our proof, we just want to show that B is in C, because then A comma B would be covered by finally many elements in U, and then we'd, we would be done. So go show B is in C. All right, now. As I said, we ideally want to use the least upper bound property. So let's first of all show that C is not empty. Well, C is not empty because, well, I'm claiming that A is in C. Why? We need to show that the interval A comma A, so that set A is, if one has a finite subcover, But the point is, since A is an in that interval and U covers the interval, it means, again, any point in that interval is covered by at least one element in that uh, family U. So in particular, A is covered by an element of uh, the family U. Uh, there is. Is U in U with A is in U, but then that just means again picture wise this is A and we know there's some U that covers it, but then that implies that the set containing, so the one family set containing U covers the interval. A, and of course this is a finite subcover because it only has one element. It's a finite subcover. It's like a one hit wonder, kind of a one element cover. Um, all right, so that's one thing. And well, why is C bounded? Well, by definition, C is all the points in A comma B that is, um, um, what's it called, uh, in A comma B that have a finite subcover, and therefore, in fact, uh, B is an upper bound for C. All right, so we have a non-empty subset of R that is bounded above. So C is bounded above, therefore um, we have a least upper bound. Hence, C 
C has a least upper bound, let's call it little c, just to confuse you more. Uh, c, which is the supremum of c. All right, and now what do we want to show? Well, next step is to actually show that the supremum has to be b. So claim, be careful, this does not yet show that b is in that set, because the supremum doesn't always have to be in your set. So claim uh, B, uh, the supremum of C is B, which by the way, intuitively it makes sense because if we want to show that A comma B is covered, you know, if I has a finite subcover, then, well, X has to be B. You see, otherwise, if the supremum is not B, it means that there's some uh, set a comma x that is covered, but then nothing more than that. And in particular, a comma b would not be uh, finitely subcovered. All right. And how do we show this? Well, suppose the supremum of c is c, but that it's not b. Okay. So here's the supremum. That is uh, a that is B, and maybe that is C. Okay. And we basically know that more or less A comma C is covered, but nothing more than that. Now, here's the issue though, because, well, C isn't the interval A comma B. So since C is in the interval A comma B, and we know that u covers the whole interval. What that means is, well, there must be some element in the family beautiful u that covers c. So there must be U in our family with C is in U. Okay, but remember this is not an arbitrary cover, that's an open cover. Therefore, we know that U is open. So since U is open, what does that mean? It means that it must contain an open ball. So since U is open and C is in U, we know that there is R positive with, again, the ball centered at C and radius R, which here is just the interval C minus R and C plus R is in U. And now let's see that this is actually a contradiction because notice the following. That was A, that was C, and then we have C minus R and C plus R. We know this is in U. Now careful, we do not know if the interval A comma C is covered because C isn't necessarily in your set. However, we do know that C minus R is less than C. So since C minus R is less than C, which remember it's a supremum of C. Okay. What does that mean? It means you're not the worst student, so there's a student that's worse than you. So there is what's called X in uh, C with X is better than a C minus R. But then, what does that mean for x to be in c? It means that a comma x has a finite subcover. So what do we know? We know a comma x has a finite subcover. Uh, so um, a comma x again has finitely many elements of your family that cover it. So a comma x has a finite subcover.
But then that's a problem because let's say you consider some element in C comma C plus R, let's say uh, C plus R over two. Well, this whole thing, the interval A comma C plus R over two, well, it's a closed interval, but then it's actually covered by not that the many sets, but then consider the following. So A comma C plus R over two. Notice it is included in the union of A comma X and if you want C minus R, C plus R. But the point is, we know a comma x has a finite subcover. And well, c minus r, c plus r, it also has a finite subcover since it's just covered by u. So finite subcover. And it's also finite subcover. So the point is, a comma c plus r over 2 has a finite subcover. And that's a problem because then, by definition, it means c plus r over 2 is in your set. Just by definition. So by definition. C plus R over 2 is in C, but that's a problem because C was the biggest element in your set, so the supremum, so this contradicts C being the supremum. It's been dethroned in some sense. We said that C is sort of the biggest one, but you found an element that's even bigger. Therefore, it contradicts what? It contradicts the fact that B is not the supremum of C, so therefore B is the supremum of C. So conclusion. B is the supremum of C. However, it doesn't conclude that A comma B has a finite subcover because we haven't shown that B is in your set. But the beautiful thing is it's almost identical to the proof above, so claim B is in the set C. Now, uh, suppose, and it just follows us from the uh, following, because notice, well, A comma B might not have a finite subcover necessarily, but B is definitely in your set. I'm sorry, B is definitely in the interval A comma B. So since B is in A comma B, and remember U covers the whole set, there must be some element in U that covers um, the point B. Uh, and U covers uh, A comma B. There is Is some u in your family with a b is in u, but again, since u is open, what do we know? We know that uh, some ball or some uh, interval uh, of um, what's called uh, we know some interval centered at. Uh, B and radius R is in that U. So we know that B uh, minus R and then B plus R is included in U for some R positive. Okay. So again, in other words, we know that some interval in particular of the form uh, B minus R and then B plus R is in some cover U. But then the point is B is the supremum in this case. C 
since b minus r is less than b, which is the supremum, we know that there's some x in between, so you're not the worst student, so there's one worse, uh, you're not the best student, so there's one better than you, so there is um, x in c with x bigger than b minus r, but the point is x is in c, so a comma x is covered, so we got you covered, but then, so since x is in c, we know that a comma x has a finite subcover. But then in particular, what do we know? Well, we know that a comma b that's included in a comma x union b minus r comma b plus r. We know now this is a finite subcover. It has a finite subcover. This also has a finite subcover. It's just covered by one element here. And therefore, uh, we get that uh, this whole thing has a finite subcover. And therefore, a comma b has a finite subcover and is therefore compact. And therefore, we are done. All right, thank you very much.